In this week's episode, we're gonna take a tour of one extraordinary alternative home made of a natural material called cob. What is cob, you ask? Don't worry, we're gonna get into that. The family that built and is now living in the home is gonna give us a short tutorial about how they built their own beautiful home with their hands and feet. All right guys, let's take a tour. Thirteen, fourteen years ago, we just stumbled upon a picture of a cob house, and ever since then, we were inspired to build our own someday. And so we spent close to ten years just dreaming and designing and drawing and researching. We have been living in this cob house for almost two years, and prior to that, we were living in our first cob home that we built for approximately three years. Our first house was definitely a practice. We found a small piece of property that uh, my parents lent us, and so we built a small 350 square foot cob house on their property just as an experiment and to stop having to pay rent every month. And it was during that process that we realized that all we wanted to do was natural building, so we started looking for our own property. This house was quite the undertaking. It took a little bit longer to build and it's much bigger. It costs between fifteen and twenty thousand dollars to build this house, which is somewhere between seven hundred and eight hundred square feet. We are actually debt free and that is because we were able to build this house out of pocket and we didn't have any overhead on this house. And while we were living in the tiny cob house, we were able to pay for the property to build this house on. I'm able to stay home and raise my daughter and not worry about daycare costs, things like that. So it's been huge for us. This is our cob bench that we're currently working on. So we thought we'd give a small demonstration of how you actually make cob. Cob is really simple. It's an uh, old building technique. It consists just of sand, clay, and straw. You mix it into kind of like a, a putty, and then you just build with it. So you can do whatever you want. Here we've got a bucket of, of soil. Um, it's just clay and sand. And you want the ideal ratio to be about 20 to 30 percent clay um, to 70 to 80 percent sand. So here we just have a small amount and what we're going to do is we're going to foot stomp it. I'm just going to add some water to the dirt mix and then you're just going to kind of mix it together and you want to just get a really good mix of the clay and the sand. So what's happening is it's acting just like mortar and bricks. And the sand particles are getting evenly coated with clay and then they'll just bond together to create a good structure. So if you have a lot of it, you can use a tarp like what we've got here to mix it together by flipping it. So you can see you can just roll it over and get it in a nice pile and then start squashing it. And Catherine's gonna just start adding some straw in. Generally, you wanna use as long uh, of straw as you can get. The longer, the better, because those fibers, as you can see on the bench here, are sticking out. They're gonna cover more area and kind of bond it, knit it all together. And here we've got some pretty good mix of cob. So as you're building with cob, you generally build up in layers like this. 
When you're building a house like this, you generally want to dampen the layer underneath it. This is just a bench, so it doesn't really matter too much. And it's going to get a final coat of plaster all over it too. So this bench took about a day to build and then a week or two to cure. So you can see it's almost fully dry now. So it doesn't take a lot of time. It is a little warmer out. So if you live in a wetter climate, it'll take a little bit longer, but about 24 hours and it should be good uh, to put the next layer on. So you could build pretty quickly. I've been building natural homes with my wife for about seven years now. This one is a straw bale cob house, typically called a bale cob. And we try to use as many natural building techniques as we possibly could. The walls are comprised of straw bales, which means that it is actually taking the load of the roof. And then the insides have four to eight inches of cob as a thermal mass on the interior. This is our first year garden here. You can see we have a lot of great pollinating plants growing. We did ferro cement beds and that's typical for water containing. It works extremely well for raised garden beds. It takes minimal amounts of cement and you can get really natural curves with them and just fill in whatever soil you want later. The windows on the house, uh, they're all recycled windows. That was a huge cost saving for the home. New windows are typically very expensive and these ones we were able to salvage either from uh, recycling stores or from the garbage dump itself. Using recycled materials is a really common practice in earthen building. We have two bottles of wine that are put together and created into a light tube. So when the sun strikes them, it'll let a little bit of light in, but the real thing that you're looking for is just artistic flair and the color that you get on the inside. And here you can see more of the bottles that we chose to do. This is on the opposite side of our shower. So when you're in the shower, you can actually see the light coming through the bottles. The plaster work is a technique that is developed by Athena Steen and she's a master plaster who's been doing it for 30 plus years. And it's done by putting multiple colors down and letting them dry slowly, and then carving back the layers to reveal the plaster underneath. So this is kind of a nice feature of the house. It looks like the foundation, but it's really just a facade. The foundation is made of earth bags, and we did like a double row of it to accommodate the thickness of our walls. And then afterwards we came back and we put these rocks, which we dug up from Danny's parents' property. They were kind enough to let us take some of their rocks. Cobb can be very sculptural. Here's an example of where we just used, after having built this entire wall, coming back and using a sticky cob to sculpt on a design and then plastering over it. You can do this really at any stage of cobbing whether it's while you're first initially cobbing or later on as an afterthought. Welcome to the interior of the house. You might feel like it looks bigger on the inside than the outside. We get that a lot. I think part of the reason is because we spent 10 years designing this house. That's key when you're going into this is spend more time drawing and planning than you would building. We use these main support beams here from our property. They were a dead tree, two trees that had been beetle killed. And so we just took those down and uh, stripped the bark off of them. I'm lucky enough to have four siblings. They all came up and we hoisted these all up just with human bodies. <laughs> we were trying to build this wall as flat as we could because we knew in our other house, we were trying to fit you know square kitchen counters onto a curved wall. It's not easy. So we just had to do a few weird little angles with this butcher block to get it to line up right. Another thing that's key for designing when you go to design a house is if you know where you want to put cupboards, if you're building a straw bale or cob house, you want wood that you can bury and stabilize in the wall that you could then screw into later to hang things, put up your cupboards. 
So sometimes with cob, it's hard to either find something that's recycled that you can upcycle or buying something new and trying to fit it into a space that's already created. So it's easier to actually just custom make some furniture, which is what we did here in the kitchen. We bought butcher block and just lumber really and some plywood and we were able to build a pretty good amount of storage for our kitchen just with that. We built these tall <laughs> shelves to try to utilize the space we have going up. My wonderful mother got me this beautiful sink. She said, what's something that you wouldn't buy for yourself but that would look nice in your new home? And so this is what I chose and I love it. Here we are in the living room or living space and majority of our furniture in this house is actually built out of cob. It's cheaper and it looks cool. Cob's a nice couch building material because if you have a curved wall like we did right here, you don't have to try to fit modern, you know, flat back couches into a space that's kind of hard. You just build your custom cob bench in whatever shape you want and you're good to go. One of my favorite things about Cobb is the windowsills that it creates. Its depth is just beautiful. This one shows exactly how thick our walls really are. This is the truth window in our house. It shows the truth of what's in the walls. You can see the straw bale I talked about back here. And this is the thickness of the cob that's built up in front of the straw bale. There's another probably four inches on the other side that help sort of mortar the bales together like bricks. Every straw bale house should have a truth window just to prove that it really is just a bunch of bales of straw. So <laughs> this space is centered around a very important feature in a cold climate like Montana, and that is the heat source. This is a rocket mass heater. Unlike most rocket mass heaters, which feature a J style tube and could burn only small amounts of wood at a time, this one actually has uh, an opening that uh, could load a, a full amount of wood into it and just be walked away from. The fire still has that sideways effect. It's going into the barrel, and then as the gas is cooled, they're gonna drop down and run through this big long masonry bench here, which is about two tons of masonry. And then it's gonna flow back up the chimney next to the barrel, where the gas can kind of collect some heat off of the the metal barrel and then exit the house. Nice thing about rocket mass heaters are that they're highly efficient. So the stoves are burning extremely clean and you're locking all of the heat into the house. So this stove burns at around 1200 degrees in the back of it, but the temperatures going outside are under 200 degrees. A key to the rocket mass heater, we figured this out because we put one of these in our first house and we ran into a few problems where we didn't have enough cleanouts. So the cleanout is down there. It's part of the exhaust system that has a little cap. Once a year, take that off and you can clean out any ash or whatever that might build up. This wall is called a trome wall and it's actually solid cob versus having bales in it. Um, it's not doing any insulating because it's within inside the house and it's positioned right in front of the big windows in the greenhouse. So it takes on a lot of solar warmth and then slowly releases it. So these walls here are extremely heavy and have just a lot of mass in them. This is what we call the greenhouse. It's kind of like an entryway. It's where we try to get passive solar energy from the sun through those big windows. In here we did, as well as the rest of the house, we did earthen floors. They're also known as poured adobe floors. And it's similar to cob, except that it's like a finer material. So instead of big pieces of straw, it's chopped straw and sifted clay and sand so that it's a much finer material and you trowel it and then you oil it. It hardens up and you can mop it just like any floor, sweep it, vacuum it. Lyra loves to play on it. You can roll cars on it. It's just great. Back here is the bathroom so we can go check that out. It's a very small space but we figured why waste valuable space on it. We did sort of a waterproof plaster here on the shower. It's called Tadillac. 
Here is our composting toilet. It's a very simple, basic design. It's sawdust toilet. Lyra can even use it with her compostable diapers. We just throw them right in there. And those break down in the compost bin as well. Lyra's lucky enough to have the room with the cob shelves because I don't do too many of them. In our first house, I did them all over because it's so fun and easy and sculptural to do. But when it comes to plastering them, it's very difficult. Make sure even if it's easy and simple to do during the cobbing stage that you understand it might take you 10 times as long to plaster it. But it's aesthetically turns out really nice and I think worth at least to do a few. One thing that happened with putting in our earthen floors was our mixture just wasn't quite perfect in this room, whether that was it was too probably too wet. And what happened was there was a crack that formed when it dried, and that is okay because actually it gives you an opportunity to make it look really neat. You can fill it in with a different color material and kind of own it. <laughs> and it turns out looking almost like marbled. So there's some good things that can come from mistakes. Alrighty, so here we are in the second bedroom, which is Mama and Dada's bedroom. I'd like to mention that some people might tell you when you're going to build a house out of cob that it's gonna be cheaper to build up versus out because you have the same amount of foundation and roof. You have to keep in mind that building up, you're gonna be lifting all your materials twice as high. It took a lot more time to lift materials up to that second level. A better option might be, and it's something that maybe we would have done if we could go back in time, would be, to build with the plan to add an addition later. And if you just had like a window or a door or something that you knew later you'd knock out and have a second or third room, that might be the better route to take. All right, so now we're upstairs in the loft and this space we built to be either a future bedroom or a guest bedroom or playroom. I would say living in a cob house has simplified our lives even more than what we were before. For one, just not having the mortgage gives us a lot more financial simplicity. And there's aspects of this house that force you to just kind of take a step back and you know not be in such a hurry. Living a simple lifestyle is definitely worth it. It's not something that you can understand until you actually experience it. Once we fell in love with natural building, we wanted to educate as many people as possible and show them that alternatives exist and are reachable. You don't need to just do the things that everybody else is doing. You can build your own home. Anyone can do it. You know, there's things that a professional carpenter would have done a much better job doing, but, but we did it. Yeah, and, and there are mistakes. And we're done with it. And we have a place that we live in now. And, Every time we think about that, it's an amazing accomplishment. Thanks for watching this week's episode. One of the best ways to support my channel is to subscribe and share this video with your friends. And I will see you next week with an all new video.